Hello there guys, welcome back to another C Sharp tutorial. In this tutorial, we are gonna look at another cases for using arrays. Well, uh, the first thing we are gonna take into account is uh, reading undefined number of elements. Okay, uh, so far in our examples, we were able to read, uh, for example, n elements. In other words, when the program starts, uh, you are being asked, uh, so for example here, you define integer of 8, and the program is going to read all these 8 numbers. Well, in some cases, you don't know how many elements you are working with. So maybe you will be entering a number of values, and when you, let's say, enter a negative number, that means you should stop entering data. Now, how do you do that? How do you read undefined number of elements? Well, basically what, what you do is the following. Let us take this real-life scenario. Uh, you want to get some people or a group of people into a trip, but you don't know how many person will be there. So one logical way to do it is to get a bus that is big enough for the maximum possible number of people. So let's say if you are sure that the number of people will be more than 10 and less than let's say 30, maybe you, you would get a bus that will uh, be able to fit, uh, you know, for 40 passengers, okay? That will be logical. Maybe you will get 11 person, they will fit. Maybe you, you will get 30, they will all fit. Or maybe you will get 40. In this case, the bus will be full, okay? So, we will do something similar in this case. Okay, so here, uh, we you will need two things. First, you'll need to define an array in this case, it will fit a number of elements. The way you define it is the same uh, is the same way like in here. But also, you will need a different variable that will tell you how many elements are being used in that array. Okay, so your array might co uh, contain 100 cells, but you are using 37, for example. So that's it. Let us see how to do it. So static, static, uh, void. We're gonna say read array. This is two. Okay. We're gonna say ref arr. Uh, oh, sorry. Ref uh, int arr. Okay. So this is the array we are gonna read, and. We would say ref int count. Okay, so what do you do here? Uh, first, you will uh, you will assign a number uh, of elements. So arr equal new int of let's say you can store up to a thousand elements. Okay, now you are gonna start reading those elements, right? So, <clears throat> we will enter a loop. First, you would say count equals zero. So, count will tell you how many elements you are using, and at the same time, will tell you what is the location of the last element. And now we will say while true, we will enter an infinite loop. Okay. So, arr of count equals int.parse system console read line okay so we read a, a number we parse it and start now what do we do so if arr of count is smaller than zero if you enter a negative value in this case in that case we are going to say return which means stop all your code that's it we are finished if not, we increase count. Okay, and 
the loop will uh, after that you, you will uh, the loop will continue so you will get back to the uh, while here I'm not sure we did we take uh, the while loop before I'm not sure but anyway you could just write for semicolon semicolon that's it uh, this will have the same effect exactly the same effect okay so as you can see here what are we doing? Uh, when you enter this loop, nothing happens, but count is pointing to zero or represent the zero's location. So you read a number. If this number is negative, so it's like you never write any element, so you return. Otherwise, uh, count will increase, and then you will read the next one, and so on. So let us try this and see if we actually, if we are reading uh, n numbers. Okay, so here I'm gonna say int. Okay, and end DC DC zero. Okay, can say this is null. So read array two. What do we have? We need to pass uh, red V and red DC. Nice. And now we need to print array. Now, if we say print V, basically from this statement you will get an array of size 1000 it contains 1000 elements you don't want to print the 1000 element you want to print up to uh, this number vc so we will make another function print array 2 we will pass this one with vc okay so uh, for print array static void print array 2 uh, int sorry Elements and then count. And now for int i equals zero, i is more than count i plus a plus system console right line e sorry element plus i dot to string <coughs> plus elements of sorry um maybe I'll make this look like that. I can do this a statement on multiple lines of course uh to make things uh, a little readable dot to string that's it this is all we need. Now, if you compare the code here in the print array 2 with the previous code of print array, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where did we do that? Oh, I've written a lot of things. Where is it? Okay, so you can see instead of count, what did we do? We we used numbers dot length, so it's almost the same code except that we are passing our own length, not the total number of elements in the array. Okay, so let's go back here and now we are gonna run this code and see how it works. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Maybe I should put a friendly message, but anyway. So I'm gonna say 10, 20, 33, minus 2. And you can see now I am using three elements of the array, although the array can store up to a thousand. But it, it is like you have a bus with a thousand seats, or let's say a train with a thousand seats, but only there are three passengers. Okay, so this is, although this is a very simple concept, but it is very important for you to know it. Because in many problems, in many problems, you don't know how many elements you are using. So the natural things to do is to allocate elements or memory greater than you need, and then you will use, uh, you know, uh, you will you will use the elements uh, or the allocations that you need when you finish your work. Uh, you know how how many uh, cells you have been using. Okay, so this is a very simple example. Uh, all we did here is uh, reading uh, numbers and storing them. Okay, it is as simple as that. I hope this illustrates the idea. 
Now, as a practice for you guys, if you are new with this concept, uh, try to make things a little bit more interesting. So change the condition for uh, for this to be well. If you enter an even number, you stop reading elements. Uh, if you enter an odd number, you stop reading elements. Uh, if you let's say the total sum of elements is greater than 100, you'll stop reading elements. Okay, so practice with these, and uh, that's it. That's all for today. Okay, so thanks for watching, and have a nice day.